you've ever blinded yourself with your weapon light in the mirror, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is out of control and it is a wasteland that is day after day getting worse. And I love you guys for it. So stay tuned and keep commenting with whatever you'd like. If you are looking to support the channel, the biggest supporter of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. It's like Costco, but for the gun world, is it going to be worth it? Do you buy things? If not, if you're poor and you live in your mom's space, I'm just kidding. It could be worth it if you buy things. Otherwise, uh, maybe it's not, but they have excellent deals on there. Highly recommend you check them out. If you're looking to buy sweet plaid in bags for your guns and all your mall ninja needs, you have Vertex. And of course, we have LEX Ammo. Discount code Grand Thumb for both of, you, both of them. Ladies, gentlemen, attack helicopters, amphibious assault vehicles. Thank you for watching today. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a very interesting weapon light, and that is going to be the Cloud Defensive Optimized Weapon Light, otherwise known as the OWL. So there's a lot that goes into this, and we can't talk about the OWL without first talking about other offerings like Arasaka, Surefire, and others. So we'll be doing a little bit of a comparison during this video and uh, doing some on-range comparison as well so you can see the target. But it's going to be very interesting, but this is going to be focusing primarily on the Cloud Defensive OWL. Now before we begin, it's always important to me that I disclose my relationship with these companies. So with Cloud Defensive, I consult for them quite often. So what does consulting mean? What it means is that they call me when they have ideas and we discuss these ideas. I give my inputs on which direction I think certain products should be taken. They don't always listen to me because they consult with a variety of people. With all those things being said, I consider myself incredibly impartial when it comes to the review process. So no matter how much money or product or anything like that I'm given, I have no problem being a savage and taking things down, such as CZ, uh, Surefire, and others who, with whom I have very close relationships as well. So it's no different with Cloud Defensive. Now I will say with the OWL that I had a lot of input um, on what kind of the directions I thought I should be taking, and most of those directions, uh, <laughs> they listen to you. probably not me, probably to other people, but in any case, I really do like the OWL and I'm very proud of um, the direction that Cloud Defensive took it and I love it. So let that be said, um, again, if you guys you know are like, oh, he's a shill he's paid for, that's fine. I just like to disclose my relationship with these companies. So anyhow, let's get into it. So what is the OWL? So what is the Cloud Defensive OWL? Well, it's a weapon light designed for people who aren't using night vision, which is the vast majority of people. Very few people actually own night vision and need a PEC-15 or a D-ball or something like that on top of the rifle. So with the, it was with those things in mind that the Cloud Defensive was made uh, this particular way. So it is a light with the mount and the tape switch all integrated into one. That way there is nothing that you have to worry about as far as mounting your rifle. You buy the Cloud Defensive Owl and it mounts directly to your rifle. So do understand that the cost on this is definitely a little bit higher than what a lot of people are used to. The Cloud Defensive Owl costs around $349 to $399 depending. Now that can seem very steep, but I want to point out that Surefire weapon lights typically cost you around uh, anywhere from $250 to $325 or something like that. Come with tail caps that no one uses and they end up switching those out for a tail cap that accepts a switch and then all that stuff coming together typically equals either more or equal to the price of the Cloud Defensive Owl. So for me, the cost isn't so much an issue, although I know a lot of people kind of get focused on that. So let's kind of get that out of the way first off. Another thing that people kind of get hung up on is the size. A lot of people look at the size of the Cloud Defensive Owl and they say, this thing is way too huge to possibly have mounted to my rifle and probably weighs a ton. So let's talk about that. So first half, the diameter of the Cloud Defensive Owl is certainly larger than comparable Arasaka or Surefire lights. As you can see right here, the diameter is larger. However, the length is roughly similar. Now on certain lights like the newer Surefire Dual Fuel, it's about the same. So it's not so much length as it is girth. It's a little girthy boy. But the girth is fairly similar to other weapon lights like the Streamlight. Uh, HLX, um, kind of similar to the mod light, a little bit thinner at the body on the mod light, but not too much different. Now, when it comes to weight, the Cloud Defensive weighs around 11 ounces with a battery. I think that's important to note. So we compare that to 
other weapon lights that put out around the same amount of output. We have the mod light, which weighs in at around 8.3 ounces or so, depending on the mount. Now, this is an Arasaka mount, which is quite light. So depending on the mount, it might be closer to nine, maybe a little bit over, and that's with battery installed on this as well, along with Surefire tail cap and SR07 tail switch. So understand that all of those things come together to make the weight up. Now, the light alone, of course, doesn't weigh a lot, but you have to equal out everything, otherwise you're not having a fair comparison. But compared to other things like the Surefire, um, Surefire is weighing around seven or so with the tail cap and everything included. So there are definitely lighter weapon lights. You have about a difference of around two plus ounces or so between those weapon lights and the Cloud Defensive. So what does all of that weight give you? And why could this possibly be worth it? What that weight gives you is damn near indestructibility. Uh, if you don't follow Cloud Defensive, they've taken these weapon lights and they've literally spiked them into the ground as hard as humanly possible and they don't break. I didn't believe it at first when I watched them because uh, they just tried to destroy this thing. But uh, these things just work no matter how hard you freaking destroy these things. In fact, if I were to take this and at light speed chuck this into the ground, the rail's probably gonna bend, the light's gonna be fine. I've taken these into uh, shoot houses with UTMs, uh, you know, force on force training. And typically a UTM will shatter most other weapon lights like the stream lights or others or surefires. Um, I've taken direct impacts with the uh, Cloud Defensive and it has not shattered. Uh, that's pretty impressive because like EOTechs will shatter from a direct impact from a UTM. So they are extremely durable weapon lights and we're gonna have a short montage right here. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it on. Turn it on. Yeah. Ah! So these things are a little bit ridiculous. They can just take a lot of abuse. And not only that, but they're also waterproof. They're submersible up to 200 feet for 24 hours. Now, even if water does get in there, it's not a big deal because the circuitry is protected. And if you get water in there, no big deal. Just let it dry out. Again, um, when it comes to a light that's just going to be able to take anything, I think that there isn't a weapon light as tough as a cloud defensive. And we'll have a torture test later on where I'm gonna do the similar things to other weapon lights as well, but there is nothing quite like this. Okay, so it's indestructible, great. What else? Well, it's also easily upgradable. Um, the head can be switched out, the entire body can be switched out. In fact, this body is very easy to take apart. So if you don't like it being on the right-hand side, it could easily be switched over to the left-hand. side now speaking of left and right hand side a lot of people look at this and they say all right it's on the right hand side it's super high I'm not gonna be able to shoot ambidextrous with it it's really not a problem so we have it on the right side right there easy to actuate and then if I need to switch so again I'm gonna reach up reach back switch, <laughs> switch it over and it's easy to hit on the opposite side as well there's really no problems as you can see my hand just kind of reaches up around the back right there because there's no wires or anything it's very easy to get on it even from the opposite side so firing ambidextrous with the cloud defensive owl is not a problem at all all right besides being able to switch to either side being upgradable with all the different components um, what else well the thing i like quite a bit about it is that there's a lack of wire wires can present a problem many rifles so you can see right here i have an lmt rifle and on this one, I have the wires managed with cable ties and a couple other things. Now, there's a variety of different uh, techniques to make sure that you're keeping wires out of the way. In fact, Cloud Defensive has a great mount that helps keep wires out of the way. But wire management is always a problem and always a concern. I'm going to catch a wire. I'm going to rip something out. And that's not always the best thing to be worrying about. So I do like that with the Cloud Defensive Owl. It's just one enclosed light that I don't have to worry about when it comes to that. And on top of that, uh, no wires. I also have the mount directly built in. Oftentimes you're buying a weapon light and you're like, oh, crap, I definitely need a mount. 
Now, that being said, I'm going to be the first to point out that the cloud defensive is not the best for every scenario because this was primarily designed for a grip that allowed you, allowed you to reach over the top. Now, there are a couple of people who put these on the side, put them in uh, unorthodox mounting positions in order to activate them. But I will be the first to admit that this might not be the best for every weapon that is out there, especially very tall weapon systems. Let's say the SCAR. The SCAR might not be great because it's very tall to get your thumb on top of that. So there are certain instances where a rifle may not be as suited. Now, depending on the size of your mitts, it might be fine. It might be one of those giants with crazy large hands where you're changing air pressures or swinging your hands, and you might be able just to monster, you know, palm that scar no problem but for most people that might not be now when it comes to switchology too what does it feel like to activate the pressure pad in the cloud defensive well i'm glad you guys asked because for the first time ever on grand thumb we're going to be ghosting the pressure pad <laughs> so what we're going to do is uh you have the pressure pad running almost the entire length of the uh of the switch right here of the of the mount so to, no matter where you press on the pressure pad whether it be at the top whether it be at the bottom, it's very generous. You can hit it at any point and still activate the weapon light. That's very useful and very good to be able to do. So what does it feel like? All right, well, let's go ahead and let's ghost this pressure pad together. So you're gonna put your thumb uh, around top of mine and uh, we're gonna go ahead and press it in. So um, it's just, it feels very much like a surefire pressure pad, which is a good thing. Um, has a little bit of give before it uh, presses in and once it does, you have that, that nice tactile sensation, kind of that little bending metal sensation where you're kind of making the contacts go and it feels, feels very good. Now we can compare that to a Surefire dual switch right here. Okay, feels very, very similar. Now the dual switch is pretty, not as forgiving as the Owl is. You have to press a little bit harder at the edges to make it work, but pretty forgiving. But compared to the Owl, the Owl definitely feels a little bit more refined as far as the area with which you can still activate the light. That's nice where I'm in a stressful situation, you know, uh, the Yakuza breaks in and I gotta gun them down like the savage I am. And I gotta press that and no matter where my grip is on that pressure pad, I'm still gonna be able to hit that weapon light and that is definitely good. Now, a couple other things about the weapon light. We don't have a stupid strobe function which is good. I actually uh, specifically advised against that as did other people and they definitely listened on that and I don't think they're planning on doing it anyhow. That was like the first thing I said. I was like, don't make it strobe. And they're like, but I was like, this isn't a rave. And they're like, okay. But the one thing they do have is a constant on. So if you want a constant on for whatever reason, I prefer momentary on, you just give it one quick tap and it will then switch on. So just a very quick tap. You have to be very quick on it. Now, otherwise what's gonna happen is it's just gonna turn on turn on and off. So if I'm searching and assessing, it's just gonna turn on. It's not gonna lead, you know, stay uh, on at any point if I have that on for more than about a quarter of a second. So if I give it a quick tap, on. Otherwise, search, it's gonna turn off. So that is how the switch on the Cloud Defensive Owl works. And I prefer that quite a bit. I don't use constant on. I haven't had any uh, issues where I've accidentally switched it to constant on when I haven't meant to. So it's worked out very well for me. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about that, let's talk about mounting. It is meant to mount to Picatinny. So with the back right here, you just undo the cap right there, and then you can screw on this little piece right here. You can use a socket wrench, whatever you'd like to do. Again, these parts are all undoable. You can completely take this thing apart, a little video of that right here. It's very easy to, dis to disassemble and again, upgrade, as I said earlier. Now, we've talked about everything about the weapon light, except for the light itself. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice when you turn on the Cloud Defensive Owl. And what a lot of pictures fail to show is how warm the light is. The light has a very warm, inviting feeling to it. You gotta really set the mood. The, the Cloud Defensive definitely sets the mood. And I like that, I'm all about setting the mood with my, with my weapon lights. So compare that to something like, let's say the Mod Light. And you might be able to see it on camera right here. But the Mod Light is a very cold, very cool light, maybe around 5500K, maybe a little bit higher compared to the Owl, which is a very warm light. So the question is, why would I do a warm light versus a cold light? Well, it depends on a lot of things. I talked to a lot of my really good friends who are, um, I wouldn't consider, well, we'll consider them weapon light experts. They're, they study light and how the eye kind of takes it in. So it's very much so individualistic in many ways. But what I've noticed for me personally is that the warm light 
from the Cloud Defensive Owl allows me to discern more detail than I can see with a colder light. Now, I will say this, with a colder light, I think I can see a lot further and I get a lot more throw, but I tend to get the details washed out versus the warmer light. Now, that might just be me. I think, I'm sure there are many people who, can, who prefer the cooler light of the Surefires or the Mod Lights or the Arasaka Lights. But for me, I found that when I've been shooting in low light situations that I very much so appreciate kind of the daylight tone that the Cloud Defensive Owl has on it. Again, that's gonna come down to personal preference. So let that be said. Now, another thing when it comes to lights is a lot of people, when they talk about a light, is they'll be like, hey, this uh, Surefire is 1,000 lumens. You're like, my God, 1,000 lumens, that sounds like a lot. Well, lumens is a raw output power. There's a lot more to a weapon light than just lumens. A really good way to measure uh, the output power of a weapon light would be candela. Candela is like the actual throw, how much it's actually able to project that light outward. Now, many great weapon lights have, you know, 1,000, 1,500 lumens, and they have around 2,700, 2,500 candela maybe a little bit more, maybe approaching 3,000. The Cloud Defensive Owl is known for its candela power, which is at around 50,000. That's pretty incredible when it comes to that power. And we're gonna have a little comparison video right now, and we're gonna talk about how that candela power actually looks. So we're gonna have a kind of a showdown between multiple weapon lights so you can take a look at them. So without you know any talking or anything like that, let's go ahead and take a look at that. We have a Cloud Defensive Owl at 10 yards. Okay, excellent spill. All right, we're gonna go back to 25. Okay, we have 50 yards of the Cloud Defensive. Okay, 100 yards of the Cloud Defensive Owl. Excellent throw. Hell yeah. Next up we have the Surefire Scout, full size, 200 series. 10 yards. All right, much wider light. Okay, now we're going back to, 20, to uh, 50. Okay, pushing to 50. Surefire. Okay, now pushing to 100. Little teeny bitty guy, 10 yards. Okay, push to 50. Okay, now we're gonna push to 100. Okay, 100 yards, the surefire scout. Next up, we have the Arasaka at 10 yards, 600 series. All right, push back. First off, we have the Surefire X300U at 10 yards. X300U, 10 yards. Okay, now we have the TLR1 at 10 yards. Finally, we have the Surefire XC1. Okay, we're gonna push back with these. Okay, surefire. XC1. Okay, we have the TLR1. And we have the X300U. Okay, I'll push it back to 100. X300U. Okay. We have the 
TLR1. And we have the XC1, which is nothing. Mod light 10 yards. Cloud defensive at 10 yards. Okay, pushing back to 50. We have the mod light at 50. Okay, now we have the cloud defensive at 50. defensive one hundred mod light. Okay, we have the mod light at one hundred. Okay, now we have the cloud defensive. So we'll let those results speak for themselves, but pretty cool little comparison right there. Now another thing about the Cloud Defensive Owl that I really like is its ability to push through photonic barriers. I like to call the Cloud Defensive Owl the photonic heat cannon. So what I mean by photonic barriers is that if I am uh, trying to identify something, you know, uh, Shrek walking down the street and it's dark and I'm on one side of a street light and he's on the other side of a street light. And I need to be able to push my photons from my weapon light through that light, uh, that, that street light onto Shrek. I need a lot of power, I need a lot of candela. The Cloud Defensive Owl really distinguishes itself by its ability to push through those photonic barriers and light up Shrek to ensure that he doesn't take us by surprise again. So that's the one thing that can be said about the Cloud Defensive Owl. Another thing is a lot of people think about weapon lights at night, but a lot of weapon lights are also used during the day in dark environments, say in a darkened building or in an alleyway. So I also did another test or I tested against the different weapon lights by having it in a building that's dark where the subject is in the dark, however, there are a lot of photonic light bleeds around, so that light has to push through that and illuminate the target. And as you can see by the following videos, You can see that the Cloud Defensive Owl definitely excels in its ability to push light out, even over the mod light, and I think that's due to the warm light. Now I want to say that the mod light is a phenomenal light, but the mod light also weighs less than the Cloud Defensive Owl. So again, there are pluses and minuses to either. On top of that, the Cloud Defensive Owl cannot be used in conjunction with IR. Well it can, it's just definitely not set up for it. So what I mean by IR, as we're going to talk about again, it's something like a PEC-15. A PEC-15 typically sits on top, not always, and it takes up a significant amount of space. Because of that, you need to have some type of offset light. In this case, I have an Arasaka in a uh, mount that push, pushes it right up against the PEC-15. And so in this case, the Cloud Defensive Owl wouldn't work there. It'd make for a very cluttered, uh, not very ergonomic setup. So it doesn't work for everything. And this is the case where the mod light would not be best suited or something like an Arasaka, or if you need more power, a mod light would be better suited to working in that environment. I believe that the Cloud Defensive Owl is among the best weapon lights currently out there. It's nearly indestructible, it's, and it's suited for people who are not going to be using night vision and just need a dedicated weapon light uh, for all those nighttime needs. A lot of people that I've seen have been using this light to shoot through low power variable optics. That's how bright the light is, so it's very capable of doing what it needs to do. Now, if you are running night vision, you need the ability to, uh, you know, 
mount this in different locations so you can add a peck and that type of thing. There are different lights out there. And I do want to point out that Cloud Defensive does have uh, weapon lights coming that will be filling that role. But for now, you have the Owl and it's well suited to a couple different situations. So is it going to be the weapon light for you? I don't know. It depends on what you're doing. So look around, do your research and figure out if this is a light for you. I'm going to say that if you need some type of home defense rifle, some type of ranch setup or something like that, that this is probably one of the best weapon lights that you can possibly get out there. This thing will survive anything that you can throw at it. In fact, your rifle might not, but this for sure will. The Cloud Defensive also boasts a lifetime warranty and is made in America. Hell yeah. So guys, with these weapon lights with shooting at night, again, super cool. But as we know, you don't look cool unless you get training. Make sure that you guys are getting training. Otherwise, none of this cool Gucci crap matters. So get out there, get training. You have great things like Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Haley Strategic, who is my father. Uh, you also have uh, Tony Cowden, and you have many other great trainers out there. Get out there, get that training. Actually, get out there, you know, actually do stuff. Guys, thank you for watching. And as usual, I've got nothing else for you. Okay, final thing that I have for you guys is kindness. I think that this is something that I hit on a couple times, but the more I look online, the more I see um, this culture where everyone likes to, wants to be the person where they get the last word and they're like, ah, I got you. You know, get that last thing in there, roast them super hard, that's all super cool and everyone can hop in and be like, oh, he got you, oh my God, you're wrong. Whatever happened to kindness, and taking things privately and talking them over privately. We don't have to always be the person to be brutal and to roast people. There's a lot to be said about handling things like a well-adjusted adult and being kind because everyone fucks up. Remember that, including you, including me. So be kind to each other. Guys, thank you for watching. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves.